Greetings everyone, this is Rock and Roll Spock Show with the Weekly Comic Book Roundup. We're a little bit late because, well, yesterday I needed sleep. Sleep is good. Anyway, we're going to kick things off with Legion of X, number 7. During Judgment Day, um, the altar was utilized to ensure the survival of as many Iraqi... Uh, well, I mean, as many of the Iraqi as possible, um, due to, obviously, Uranus' assault on planet Araka. Um Anyway, we are... So, Judgment Day has come and gone. Um, basically, the morning meeting for those uh, involved work with... for uh, Nightcrawler's Legionnaires... Um, but there is uh, <clears throat> something that's come up. Apparently, Nightcrawler now has a pair of horns growing out of his forehead. And he explains that um, he had, he doesn't know why this is, but it um, does not appear to have been caused by a biological trigger. He does not appear to be the victim of a curse. And it doesn't appear to be contagious through uh, touch or fluid transfer. So, also, um, uh, Cypher brings Warlock to the altar. Um, something, uh, though initially, Legion doesn't recognize Warlock due to the fact that he looks much different in the altar than he does uh, in reality. It takes blindfold able to figure it out, though. But um, there are some basic Warlock has found some astral blooms. He's found some on Juggernaut. Um, more on a whole more. But, a lot more on Krakoa, and all clinging to mutants who had visited uh, the altar recently. It appears to be um, the uh, related to the phalanx. And we get a in part uh, relating to the, the recent death of uh, Warlock's father, Magus. <clears throat> but, um... They're... At least some of the ones that they've managed to find are uh, done away with. And we get an entire write-up on uh, Phalanx Technarchy life cycle. <laughs> The idea being that the, tech, the technarchy are, at least, um, while they are agents of, they are uh, basically agents of the phalanx, um, in a, they are self-aware, they are sentient enough that they have put, that everything involved, their subservience to the phalanx is subconscious as opposed to something they know. Meanwhile, uh, Nightcrawler alongside uh, Dr. Nemesis and uh, Pixie go to visit uh, Mr. Sinister to figure, maybe see if uh, Sinister can figure out why Nightcrawler has horns suddenly. We get some uh, banter between uh, Nemesis and uh, Sinister, which is honestly hilarious. Before Sinister shoots Nightcrawler in the face. Before he's resurrected, um, Banshee talks to, tells him a few things. Um... But he wants to make sure that any, and there are some things that he want that Banshee wants to make sure to stick when uh, Nightcrawler is resurrected. But 
na namely to protect Legion, as uh, he's been as Banshee's been shown what happens uh, if he faces the future alone. But uh, Nightcrawler resurrects, and the horns are more pronounced. But Mother Righteous is looking in on what's going on. And notes on Warlock, what she described as a hitchhiker. Meanwhile, um, <clears throat> one of the, the uh, things that's been brought up for uh, Legion to, to take a look at is they've been requested to uh, visit X Corp headquarters by uh, Warren. And so, Nightcrawler, Pixie, and Dr. Nemesis, after Nightcrawler's resurrection, had to do just that. In Los Angeles, at X-Corp's headquarters, Black Knight, Jax, is facing off against something when the Legionnaires show up. But, uh, she was, uh, meeting with, Jax was meeting with, uh, Warren. What about it says it's she says it doesn't matter. They went to make a call and then share a crash. And it seems that well Warren has uh Warren's arch Warren takes an archangel form and uh it's uh, an even darker version of the archangel form than previously seen. And that is where the issue ends. Interesting. Um, should be interesting. It will definitely be interesting to see where we go with uh, what's happening to War and Kurt. And um, something I something that popped up online the other day after the release of, the, of this issue is that perhaps it seems Cy Spurrier is uh, kind of picking up the ball um, of the involvement of with the phalanx involvement uh, that was. Kind of just you know set aside by Jonathan Hickman early on during uh, House of X, House of X and Powers of Ten. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Moving on to our next book, we've got Marauders number eight. Where we left off, um, the refugees from the three uh, mutants were basically refugees from uh, Threshold. Um, had talked about what. Occurred in their their in the before they uh, put themselves in a time drive and hid themselves, but um, and it was decided that uh, the Marauders would do what they could to save as much of the threshold as possible. Though um, the two viral agents that uh, caused the most trouble for threshold were one of them was. Sublime. So the plan is discussed. Uh, Kate is just like, yeah, we're going to save as many of them as we can. Period. End of discussion. Um, Psylocke is uh, showing around, showing Crave around. He's hanging out at the uh, uh, the Green Lagoon. Um, And eating anything he's offered. Including one of Grey Crow's guns. Um, Cassandra was talking with one of the other uh, survivors. And Tempo, Tempo explains the plan to the third. So, um, they've got uh, brooches to to help with, uh, to assist with their displacement. Um, but the team travels back in time. They arrive. Um, apparently Threshold was on Earth. Um... 
but they arrive in the past. Um, and Akihiro gets in infected by, seemingly by Sublime. And that is where the issue ends. Okay. I think he as a hero. He's as he's take, now taking on new uh, the name Fang after the uh, after what after the recent uh, John Shiard space. So. Interesting issue. Um, I'm like I'm kind of liking the uh, the time travel app uh, aspect when it comes to uh, the new Marauders uh, run. Um, I do feel like the book has finally found its gro its uh, groove, so that that's definitely a plus. Um, Marauders was one of my favorite uh, was probably my favorite of the uh, initial uh, Krakoan era books. So, and like I said. The, well, the first run of Marauders seemed to find its, its, its groove pretty quickly. It does take a few issues for this new one to find its groove, and it's found it, I, it's found it well. So, moving on to our next book, we've got Sabretooth and the Exiles, number one. Where we left off in the Sabretooth miniseries, um, Sabretooth had uh, fled Krakoa. He had been he had stolen Bling's boat and had been uh, convinced to go after an Orcus facility by Mystique and Destiny. And the other uh, inmates from the pit had opted to go after him. So, at uh, Orchid Station 6, we get find out that a scientist uh, is working with uh, mutant parts to make uh, Make better mutants, as it were. And, well, they've got uh, Sabretooth handy, and so now, well, suffice to say that uh, Dr. Barrington is quite pleased that she has a subject who will potentially last much longer than previous ones did. But uh, the exiles are heading, heading his way. Um, Madison Jeffries has made turns off into a uh, well a hovercraft, um, we get the usual banter between Nanny and Orphan Maker. Peter's trying to you know Peter's basically trying to make friends while Nanny's trying to keep him you know to herself. Apparently, someone's been showing him movies. But, uh... When uh, the Eggles arrive on the island, they discover that the island itself is basically a mass grave. When the station uh, sets down, but, uh... Madison Jeffries turns himself into a giant mech, and Barrington releases her uh, her experiment her, her, to take on the mutants and bring any that might be useful to her. But uh, Jeffries manages to escape from uh, Barrington. Well, Third Eye uh, tries to find out what uh, Barrington's uh, deal is. But uh, Barrington's uh, project kidnaps, uh, ends up taking uh, Orphan Maker. And of course, the rest of the exiles decide that they're going to uh, save Orphan Maker. Well, yes, uh, Sabretooth has managed to escape. With and 
retrieve Blunge's boat, the boat in the process. But that is where the issue ends. Interesting. Solid start. Um, it's if I remember, this is just a mini series though. Um, won't be an ongoing. I get the feeling it may have to do with uh, the upcoming slate of events, so we'll see. Moving on to our next book, we've got Wolverine number twenty-seven, where we left off. Uh, Wolverine and his uh, ally within the CIA, uh, Jeff uh, Jeff Bannister, had uh, were following a lead to potentially track down Legacy House. And they walked right into a trap. Um, Bannister was uh, basically bound and set, set, to, and put, set to the side, while uh, Wolverine was made the target of an auction after being, you know, constantly injured to the point of not so much overtaxing his healing ability, just you know, kind of a. One well, one wound is uh, healing, more are made, so it it does kind of take a while to heal. Things such as but included this auction would include such things as bullets freshly pulled out of Wolverine, and then Beast, who was involved with who was watching the auction, asked how much to be the person who kills Wolverine. So we begin with. Uh, Wolverine being resurrected. Um, Beast puts a uh, collar on him and that squirts him out of the, uh, the hatchery. And then sends him on uh, we get these quick mich uh, missions he's being sent on. They're assassination missions. Plain and simple. I mean, he, he kills a uh, a parliament member of parliament who uh, is anti mutant. Um, a uh, a, pol a pollen refinery is uh, those working are wiped are killed while the refinery itself is uh, destroyed. Pan Asian Alliance strike unit is uh, killed. An anti mutant reporter is killed. And his computer as well. But um, Domino goes to talk with Sage, wondering what's going on. Um, while Sage is uh, drinking. But apparently, the mission that uh, Sage, or that Sage had sent uh, Domino, Deadpool, and Omega Red on, it was a success. But it would have gone. Uh, they really could have used Wolverine. But Uh, Domino tries to Sage is well drinking heavily and so Domino es escorts her back to her back home but um, we get more of Wolverine just killing random people for uh, that Beast's uh, discretion Beast is also just occasionally bringing in uh, food for him But uh, we see what happened. Um, there was a bit of negotiation. No one trusted Beast. Why? Why anyone would is be, it, it anymore is beyond me. But yes, uh, but uh, there's to be a, a meeting with uh, exports meeting, so to speak about the new direction of the uh, team. But uh, Dominus asked, shouldn't Wolverine be part of the discussion? Though, uh, 
B states that he's part of it, and, you know, the two of them have spoken, and uh, he agrees completely. But um, there, Black Tom is had, basically adds to adds a uh, skull motif to the point. It's waterfall mainly. Let everyone know they're there. But. Uh, Apparently, Beast did manage to uh, do some damage to the Legacy House itself. Though it's unclear what... Uh, what Beast has done with uh, Bannister. However, the end of the issue makes clear what he's done with... Uh, what Beast has done with Wolverine. Logan's adamant to skull. It, polished and cleaned as Captain Beast's home. And that is where the issue ends. So I'd say it's, it, I'd say it's at this point that Beast has gone full villain. So it's sad, but it's the kind of thing we kind of... Reading X-Men comics from the last decade or so, it was kind of clear that that was where we were going. Moving on to our next book, we've got X-Men Legends number four. Where we left off, um, Mojo had uh, taken, having just retrieved Longshot at, at the end of the Longshot mini, the initial Longshot miniseries, Mojo and Spyro also took uh, Wolverine and Shadowcat uh, prisoner and decided to put, the, to put them all in a war movie. And while in a Mojo war movie, everyone dies. But uh, Logan and Kitty are on oppo are opposing generals. Uh, long shots on, on Kitty's side, but uh, they fight through. Um, basically, the the brain well, the brainwashing to, for the war movie in question uh, is beginning to fade. Um, Major Domo and Spiral are also not too happy with how things are going. Uh, but, uh, they, they managed to, to make good their escape. We learned that Spiral is, make, has, is uh, quietly setting up her own studio on Mojoverse. And, uh, they also find some of Mojo's, uh, mind props. And Spiral kind of, uh, helps facilitate, uh, the, the trio's escape. <clears throat> Though their memories of the entire thing promptly fade. And, as a slap in the face to Mojo... Spiral receives all the awards for the, for the movie. And as the issue says, that's a wrap. A fun little story. Uh, a fun little story. And like I said, I, I, I'm glad. I, I do like the, uh, the fact that they're somewhat re retaining the same uh, concept with, um, with X-Men Legends for the, the new series. So. Moving on to our last book for the moment, we've got Wildcats, number one. I had I, I had to get to this as soon as possible. <laughs> so the last time we saw any of the Wildcats, um, they was in Batman Urban Legends. Um, there was the the Grifter store that kicked up. There was part of the first that ran through the first five issues. Um, Grifter was hired uh, to be Lucius Fox's bodyguard. Dealing with threats from Leviathan, and it turns out the whole thing—he was uh, 
basically he was there as working for the Halo organization. Um, but he was supposed to be secretly part of the thing was that Cole was supposed to be part of Leviathan, getting in close to Lucius Fox to enable Leviathan to have access to Wayne Enterprise's uh, resources. But that was all a front to get Cole in, in with Leviathan so that Halo could take down, could, be get work, could work on bringing down Leviathan. And in the sixth issue, we had a one-off story where Zealot fought, uh, or Zana fought um, Wonder Woman and made off with a sample of her blood on one of uh, her blades. So, um, we kind of begin. The Wildcats have gone into a, uh, have gone to a, a hive uh, facility. They need a scientist. Um, Drifter tries to trick one of the uh, Hive Troopers into uh, just giving up. So, uh, weaving his whole tale of the Karens and Daemonites. The Karens being a doomed race that uh, their, their planet was destroyed. They searched for a new home and, and they came upon the Daemonites and then they had to run from them. And The war between the Karabim and the Daemonites has uh, unknowingly shaped, has really shaped human history so on and so forth. But yeah, it, it, it's all BS. Um, and uh, Zana and Cole are having some of a competition so you can get the higher body count. Um, death blow sides with Zana. And so Cole has to pay her up. Pay up. But they find the, the scientist. Turns out the scientist is torturing apes. Um, and Cole is just like, yeah, no. That's not the kind of person that and kills him. They leave just before Nightwing and Batgirl, or um, Cassandra Kane, show up. Marlowe's not ha at at the Halo building in Star City, which is still under construction. Marlowe's not happy with the fact that the scientist was killed. Um, so it's stated that they need to get, a, get another one, which is something Cole is working on. But they also need, it's decided they need a new team member, and so Fairchild will be uh, joining them in the field. But uh, at Clark's Bar, which, yes, they brought that. I'm so, so glad they brought that back. Um, Cole's talking to a scientist about the scientist bolts uh, as to... Uh, Uh, basically, Constantine, uh, Draken, and Brick show up to uh, give Cole grief. Apparently, they uh, they knew Cole's brother and well, he claims he was a piece of shit too. But uh, Cole gets arrested, uh, bailed out by by Marlowe, where he meets John Colt or Jack Colt. Uh, Marlowe's bodyguard. Um, they go yet again get find yet. They've got now Cole managed to get the uh, the ID badge for the science he was talking to, and we see the Wildcats under heavy fire. Um, <clears throat> they they appear to be stuck, but. Uh, Fairchild uh, takes out some of the their assailants before passing out, and then Green Arrow shows up. Fairchild is uh, manages to punch a hole in the floor, and that's how the team make their escape. And that is where the issue ends. Fun start to the book. Um, I kind of like the fact that <laughs> basically Grifter's presence pretty much makes the entire team a train wreck. Um, yes, there's there was there's no question we're going to be continuing to follow that uh, that book as it 
guys, it goes on. So, anyway, that is going to do it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal account in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.